a comet with a hyperbolic path, an alien chemistry, and a trail of evidence that refuses to fit the rules. This is 3i slash Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar object ever seen, and new evidence reveals what it might be, and why that answer could redefine not just comets, but the way worlds themselves take root. Is 3i slash Atlas a natural wanderer, a cosmic planet seed, or a sign that something engineered is passing through unnoticed? If even a fraction of the latest data holds up, the consequences aren't good for what we thought we knew. Here's where the story and the questions begin. Since the first telescopes swept the night sky, every confirmed interstellar visitor has rewritten the boundaries of what astronomers thought possible. Each one is a singular event, a cosmic wildcard, neither forecast nor repeatable, a fragment of some distant system hurled across the void. But with three I slash Atlas, the question cuts deeper than trajectory or chemistry. What if the universe is not just a place where worlds happen, but a place where worlds are planted? The idea is as old as myth, yet now it stands on the edge of scientific debate, pressed forward by data that refuses to fit easy categories. Here, the promise is simple. Every claim will be tested, every leap labeled for what it is. Facts anchor the story. Speculation is signposted, not smuggled in. The evidence, whether chemical, physical, or orbital, will draw the line between what we know and what we only imagine. The stakes are not just academic. If a single object from another star can carry the seeds of planets or the fingerprints of intent, then the story of our own origins demands a second look. This is not a hunt for the sensational. The bar for extraordinary proof stands higher than ever. A comet with a hyperbolic orbit is rare, but not impossible. Chemistry that bends the rules may hint at a wilder cosmic laboratory, or it may be a signal lost in the noise of small numbers. The challenge is to hold wonder and doubt in equal measure, to resist the urge to explain away what cannot yet be explained. As the investigation unfolds, every possibility, natural wanderer, planet seed, or engineered artifact, will be tested against the data. The method is as important as the answer, skepticism, transparency, and the discipline to say, we don't know yet. In cosmic gardening, the real lesson may be that every seed, natural or not, carries with it the weight of the unknown. From the moment Atlas flagged a fast-moving anomaly near the galactic center, the chase for three I slash Atlas became a race against both distance and time. The first detection, July 1st, 2025, placed it nearly 670 million kilometers from the sun deep in the southern skies above Chile. Its velocity, about 58 kilometers per second, relative to the Sun, set it apart from the slow parade of solar system comets. The orbit, hyperbolic and retrograde, cut across the ecliptic at a sharp angle, tracing a path that could only have begun far beyond the Sun's reach. Archived survey images, pulled from June 14th onward, revealed a faint, persistent track. Ray Chen, combing through the Zwicky Transient Facility's back catalog, pieced together a timeline that stretched the comet's known activity weeks before its official discovery. Each new data point narrowed the uncertainty, letting orbital models lock onto a trajectory that would carry the object through a series of key milestones, a near pass by Mars on October 3rd, just 30 million kilometers distant, followed by its closest approach to the Sun on October 29th at 1.36 astronomical units. December 19th would bring 3i slash Atlas within 1.8 astronomical units of Earth, the prime window for high-resolution spectra and isotopic analysis. By March 16th, 2026, it would swing past Jupiter at a mere 0.36 astronomical units, offering one last chance to track its drift before it faded into the outer dark. Dr. Maria Fuentes, leading the Atlas night shift, recalled the tension as the minor planet center rushed to verify the orbit. Early fits wobbled between distant comet and potential hazard, but the numbers soon converged on a solution, unbound, inbound, and carrying the signature of an interstellar visitor. The path was mapped, the clock set. Now, every checkpoint became a test of chemistry, of motion, of cosmic origin. Carbon dioxide dominates the coma of 3i slash Atlas, crowding out water vapor by a factor of nearly 8 to 1. That ratio alone reshuffles the chemistry playbook for comets, 
especially those born in the cold reaches between stars. Standard solar system comets rarely tip the scales past unity, and even the wildest outliers seldom cross the threshold. Here, carbon dioxide is the main act, not the supporting cast. The first hints of water, traced through faint OH emission, appeared while Atlas was still over 500 million kilometers from the Sun, at nearly 3.5 astronomical units. That's well beyond the reach where sunlight can normally pry water ice from a nucleus. Instead, the early onset of OH suggests a volatile rich surface, or perhaps a crust so thin that even distant solar heating can spark activity. This is not a slumbering relic, but a body primed to react at the faintest touch of warmth. Imaging from ground-based telescopes and orbiting observatories reveals a coma shaped by competing forces. A sunward dust fan, broad, forward-facing, and persistent, spreads out from the nucleus, catching the light in a way that hints at large, porous grains flung outward with surprising efficiency. Behind it, a faint anti-solar tail stretches away, barely visible except in deep exposures. The geometry is anything but textbook. The dust fan glows brightest toward the sun, a pattern more often seen in comets with powerful jets or highly processed surfaces. Yet, for 3i slash Atlas, the fan's structure remains stable across weeks of monitoring, defying the erratic outbursts typical of most newcomers. Spectroscopy confirms the coma's complexity. Carbon dioxide lines blaze in the infrared, while traditional water and CN bands linger at the edge of detection. The dust itself reddens the reflected light, a sign of organic rich or carbonaceous material. Each measurement adds to the puzzle. The volatile mix and dust architecture refuse to settle into familiar categories. Instead, they draw the eye toward deeper questions. What kind of environment could forge such a body, and what does its structure reveal about the journey it has taken? Nickel lines, clean and unmistakable, cut through the spectra of 3i slash Atlas, while iron, the usual partner in cometry dust, remains conspicuously absent. The VLT group, working through the early autumn nights, measured nickel production rates near 4.6 grams per second at a distance of 2.85 astronomical units. Yet, even as they pushed their instruments to the limit, iron's signature refused to show. The resulting nickel-to-iron ratio runs higher than in any solar system comet on record, a chemical fingerprint that raises questions about both formation and processing. Meanwhile, the light scattered by the dust tells its own story. Polarimetric observations reveal a negative branch deeper than minus 2.7% at a phase angle of 6.4 degrees. This is not a subtle dip, but a sharp plunge, one that only the most porous, aggregate-rich dust populations can produce. Laboratory analogues and numerical models converge on the same conclusion. The grains must be clusters of hundreds, even thousands, of submicron particles, bound loosely into fluffy, low-density aggregates. Compact surfaces, engineered or natural, cannot reach this depth of negative polarization without extreme, unlikely microstructure. The dust itself reddens the coma's reflected light, a sign of organics and carbon-rich materials woven into the mix. The size of the nucleus remains elusive. Estimates from Hubble and ground-based telescopes bracket it between 0.44 and 5.6 kilometers, but the bright, dust-heavy coma clouds every attempt at a definitive measurement. Taken together, these signatures, nickel without iron, deep negative polarization, and a nucleus veiled by exotic dust, defy easy classification. The evidence stacks up across disciplines, from spectral chemistry to light physics, each piece adding weight to the anomaly ledger. The next step is to test which, if any, of the leading hypotheses can withstand this growing catalogue of contradictions. Three competing models now stand at the center of the debate. The first, favored by most planetary chemists, treat 3i slash Atlas as a natural, if chemically unruly, interstellar comet. In this view, the high carbon dioxide to water ratio, the early onset of OH emission, and the deep negative polarization branch are all signs of a body forged in the coldest reaches of another star's nursery. The dust, loose and aggregate rich, fits with years of laboratory analogues and polarimetric models. For the naturalists, 
Every anomaly is a chance to redraw the boundaries of comet taxonomy, not to invoke the extraordinary. The second hypothesis, advanced by theorists like Dr. Nina Alvarez, argues that 3i slash Atlas could be a planet seed, a nucleus ejected from a young system carrying the isotopic scars of its birth. If such objects are routinely captured by protoplanetary disks, they might solve the puzzle of how gas giants form so quickly. Alvarez points to the potential for non-local isotopic ratios, cosmic messages in a bottle, as the key test. The search for these fingerprints has driven fierce competition for JWST and ALMA time, with advocates betting that a single anomalous ratio could rewrite the timeline of planet formation. The third, more radical scenario treats 3 slash Atlas as a disguised artifact or even a living system engineered to mimic a cometary body. Avi Loeb, a persistent voice for open-minded rigor, insists that oddity alone is not enough. To claim artifact, the evidence must clear a higher bar. Persistent, unexplainable accelerations, jetting patterns that defy physics, or spectral lines impossible to fake. Anything less, he cautions, is just the universe's wild side, not a sign of intent. Each model demands its own proof, and the next round of data will test which story survives the facts. Every theory on the table faces the same uncompromising filter. Evidence must clear the bar set by both physics and statistics. For 3i slash Atlas, that means more than a few outlier numbers or a single odd spectrum. The standard for proof is not just high, it's specific. A persistent non-gravitational acceleration, one that can't be traced to outgassing or solar tides, would force a reckoning. But comets are notorious for subtle, sun-driven nudges, only repeated, unaccountable thrusts, tracked over weeks and mapped against every known jet model, would count as true anomalies. Chemistry, too, must withstand the burden of repeatable measurement. An impossible molecular ratio or a spectral line that defies laboratory reproduction would raise alarms. Yet, the records of comet science are littered with false leads, instrumental ghosts, background blends, calibration errors that mimic the extraordinary. That's why every claim is cross-checked by independent teams using different telescopes and reduction pipelines before it earns a place in the anomaly ledger. Statistics, meanwhile, are the silent referee. With only two prior interstellar objects, Oumuamua and Borisov, every new arrival risks being the exception, not the rule. Post hoc probability traps abound. A single odd trajectory or rare chemistry can look significant in isolation, but fade against the backdrop of a vast, still unknown population. The discipline is to resist the urge to declare a verdict on thin evidence. Extraordinary claims, artifact, planet seed, or exotic comet require not just a pattern, but a pattern that survives every alternate explanation and every skeptical eye. The countdown now runs on four dates, each a checkpoint in the search for answers. October 3rd brings a close pass by Mars, 30 million kilometers, a cosmic near miss. Yet as of late September, ESA's Mars Express team has not confirmed plans to retarget the orbiter for comet observations. If a last minute schedule change arrives, it will land first in official bulletins. For now, the main action shifts to Earth's telescopes. October 29th marks perihelion. Here, 3i slash Atlas swings closest to the Sun at 1.36 astronomical units just beyond Mars's orbit. Activity peaks in this window. Ground-based teams will chase chemistry in real time, searching for sudden shifts in volatile release or dust jetting. The comet's coma, already a puzzle, may reveal new layers as it heats, a chance to catch chemistry rewriting itself on a cosmic clock. December 19th is the prime window. At 1.8 astronomical units from Earth, the comet enters the crosshairs of the James Webb Space Telescope, Hubble, ALMA, and the Very Large Telescope. Dr. Lila Morgan at JWST leads the campaign for isotopic ratios, Dover H, carbon-13 over carbon-12, nitrogen-15, oxygen-18. These numbers, measured to the fourth decimal, could settle the argument over birthplace and process. Each instrument brings a specialty. JWST for organics and isotopes, 
HST for coma structure, ALMA for faint gas lines, VLT for dust and metals. The data pipeline runs hot, every hour of observation fiercely negotiated. March 16, 2026 is the final act. The comet slips past Jupiter at just 0.36 astronomical units. Precision astrometry, timed by teams at Paranal and Mauna Kea, will hunt for any non-gravitational nudges, the kind that simple physics cannot explain. If there's a hidden engine or a programmed plume, this is where the numbers might betray it. The outcome is open, the test ongoing. For now, the story belongs to those watching the sky and those ready to read the signals as they arrive. Every path forward from three I slash Atlas branches, from a single trunk, evidence. The outcome tree is not a maze of speculation, but a map drawn by what the universe allows us to measure. If the chemistry holds steady, carbon dioxide outpacing water, isotopes tracing a line back to cold distant nurseries, then the verdict is a natural, if exotic, comet. The catalogue of known worlds grows stranger, and the boundaries of comet science stretch outward, one data point at a time. Should the isotopic ratios break from every solar system pattern, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, all out of step, then the planet seed model gains ground. A non-local fingerprint, preserved through eons of interstellar drift, could rewrite how astronomers understand the birth of gas giants. Each ratio, measured to the fourth decimal, becomes a message from another star's nursery, a clue to the machinery of planetary creation. If, instead, the numbers refuse to fit, if the comet's path veers in ways that sunlight and gas cannot explain, or if spectral lines appear that no natural process can forge, then the most extraordinary scenario stands ready for its own test. The bar for artifact or living system remains impossibly high, repeatable, instrument-proof, impossible to fake. Anything less is noise, not signal. Through every branch, the method holds. Claims are weighed, not wished. Skepticism is a tool, not a shield. The story of 3i slash Atlas is not a contest of wild theories, but a slow, deliberate climb toward what can be known. In the end, the universe answers only to the questions we are disciplined enough to ask. The next observation windows, October near Mars, December from Earth, and March by Jupiter, are scheduled to gather data that could confirm or eliminate each scenario. With just three interstellar objects on record, every dataset matters. The evidence demands skepticism, but also open eyes. The answer may expand or even upend our understanding of how planets and possibly life itself begin.